you're switching off their data roaming. <laughs> well, it's, it's a bit cheaper, isn't it? This week the price has gone down, so they got away with it. In Europe, at least. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Twelve minutes past seven. Now, many councils say switching off some streetlights can save them money, but now it's being claimed the move is costing lives. Yeah, the AA says that at least six people have been killed in the last five years, five pedestrians and one of them a cyclist, because drivers had little or no chance of avoiding the collision on dark roads where the lights had been switched off. So just how important are those streetlights? We're going to discuss this in a moment with uh, somebody who knows from personal experience. But first, let's hear what you think. They should keep the lights on. We need to be able to see at night. If you look at kind of street lights and the light pollution that comes off it, um, obviously it'd be better if there was less light, but you want to keep people safe, so... LED lights are great. Even though people criticise them, it does light up the road. I think to actually put people's lives at risk in terms of trying to find some cheap uh, economy uh, routes um, is the completely wrong thing to do now. I think everyone feels more secure where there's better lighting, don't they? It doesn't matter what the area is like, it's just, you know, a fact of life. You do need the better lighting. I do think it's dangerous, yeah, especially where I live, it's black, it's pitch black. We're in areas where you don't have a lot of traffic or um, and it's not going to affect the local community too much, then it should be turned off. But in areas where it's built up and it, you obviously need the lighting, mm -hmm. then it should be kept on. It's a sentiment that is echoed by Matilda Wellbelove, whose brother Archie was killed on a road where the lights had been switched off. She's here now to join us on Breakfast, together with Alistair Scott from the Institution of Lighting Professionals. Welcome to both of you. Morning. Hi, morning. Matilda, tell us about what, what happened to Archie. Um, he was walking along a um, unlit road on the um, Kenilworth Road, walking back from uni, and um, he was hit by a car. He was walking on the other side of the road, there was the pavement carried on on the other side of the road, it just stopped and um, he got hit by a taxi, by a black cab and um, he was instantly killed, his head, part of his skull went into um, his brain, he was instantly killed. This is uh, awful and awful for you to recount but um, the street lights in the area had been switched off hadn't they? Mm -hmm. and when an inquest was went into Archie's death, um, it was it was decided that that was a factor, yeah, um, contributing yeah. towards the um, issue. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel? About well, that? I, I, um, I wouldn't like to put any blame on anything because I know that there were a lot of contributing factors. Um, that is, that was obviously one of the main factors, but he was also drunk and wearing dark clothing and wasn't easily seen. So, no one's to blame. But I think that. Um, from what the coroner said, if the lights were turned on, they're probably he probably would have had more of a chance of not being killed, being seen. We should say here that Warwickshire County Council, this is where it happened, uh, they've told us that uh, while well, they accept that uh, the absence of street lighting was one of many contributory factors uh, identified by the coroner, they say a causal link was not actually established. It wasn't necessarily, the, as you say, it wasn't yeah. necessarily the, the only uh, cause, and they say that they're making uh, location checks at the moment to make sure that improvements can be made elsewhere. Alistair, let, let, let's turn to you. I mean, switching off the lights on streets across the country, it's one thing councillors have been doing to save money. Do, do you think this is a, a growing safety issue, though? Well, street lighting is primarily a, a safety issue, and I think, obviously, it's a tragedy when any death occurs because of a lack of street lighting. So it's important that local authorities do the proper due diligence to ensure that if they haven't got lighting that it's safe not to have lighting in that area. So we would uh, propose and recommend that street lighting professionals are involved in an assessment, a risk assessment of the street along with road safety experts to it make sure that um, there is no risk to switching off. But there are better ways to deal with the I was going to say, is there anything you could, do? is it on or off or is there an alternative? No, nowadays there's much better technology that allow the street lights to be dimmed so you can have different light levels at different times of the night, dependent on, upon the usage. So I think part of the issue is the fact that local authorities are, are strapped for cash. They've got other priorities, education, etc. So street lighting comes low on their list, but it's important that uh, <clears throat> they do put it in where there's a safety issue. A lot of research needs to be done on this, though, as to which particular 
streets or areas need to be cut off? I mean, many people are saying if it's a quiet residential street, Matilda, I don't, I don't know what the street was like, what the road was like where Archie was tragically killed, but people say if it's a very quiet street, then perhaps it's not needed, but a main thoroughfare, perhaps it's different. What's your view on this? Yeah, it's, um, the street is, is quite often used by, because it's Leamington Spa, it's a lot where a lot of the, um, the students from Warwickshire Uni go like, to live in their second year out. So a lot of students are walking along that road at night after they've obviously had a bit too much to drink and it's, it's dangerous. It's not... So it's a busy road pedestrian-wise? Yeah. yeah. When you hear people talking about this being an easy way for councils to save money, yeah. bearing in mind what, what happened to Archie, what goes through your mind when you hear those sort of statements? I, I don't think that um, it's justifiable to turn the lights off. I don't think that you can put a price on a life or on... I don't think that saving money is worth another family having to go through what my family's had to go through, and I don't, I don't think that it's right. And Alice, I mean, the, the, the kind of new technology you mentioned about, yes, the issue yes. for councils mm. is that that's going to cost them money to install and change as well, isn't it? It is, so but uh, the new technology and reducing light levels later on in the night um, still allows people to see and be seen, so it's uh, much safer than, than switching lights off. And it also, with the new technology, you're using much less energy, so you're getting a payback within maybe 10 years. So it, a lot of authorities now are investing in new technology, so it's... Uh, there's some real progress being made in that. And some authorities where they have switched off lights are switching them back on but dimming them down to a lower level, which is much safer. OK, Alistair, thank you. Matilda, thank you for, for coming and telling us about Archie as well. Thank you. It's 19 minutes past seven. Still to come on the programme today.